In DaVinci Resolve 16, one of the most powerful tools available is under the Fusion tab, and it's called the Paint Node. Now this has many, many different functions and different uses. You can use it to draw freehand shapes. And you can use polyline strokes to do more geometric shapes, like arrows, triangles. You can also manipulate it after you've drawn the shapes. You can later move it around and edit it. It also has a great feature for cloning and removing objects. So if you have an object you want to remove, say like this tree here, just come down here and then use the clone paint tool and just kind of remove that. So in this video, I'll show you the basics of how to use the tool, kind of how to set it up, how to connect it, uh, best practices of when to use it, and what some of the tools in the toolbar up here are used for, and just kind of give a basic overview of the features available. If you keep watching, I'll go over how to use the paint node in Resolve 16. Okay, to get started in Resolve 16, you're going to want to add some footage. So I'm in the Edit tab here, and I have some footage available in my media pool. So I'll drag and drop on these clips over, put that onto my timeline. Now there's a few different ways to get into the Fusion tab. You could add a Fusion composition here, add that to the timeline. And then if you go into the Fusion tab, this is where your Fusion composition will be attached to. But I'm not going to do that in this example. I could also add an adjustment clip in the same way. And again, the Fusion clip will be uh, where the or adjustment clip will be where the Fusion Cup will uh, be attached to. Right here I'm just going to do it directly on the footage just for this example. So I'm going to switch over to the Fusion tab. And once I do that I'll have a media in and a media out node in the node editor here. So I'm just going to kind of rearrange this a little bit. So once here we have our different quick tools here that we have available. These are kind of the most used ones uh, in Fusion that people use on a regular basis, so they have them available here. And one of them is the paint node. So for showing off just these real basics, I'm gonna start off by just having the media in selected. And I can put that in the first viewer here by hitting the one key. And if I have that selected and hit the paint node right here, that'll add it directly afterwards. And then I can put that into the first viewer here so that anything done in the paint node, any painting I do, any drawing, and it will be immediately output to the media out, which will then go back to the edit tab. So to show that real quickly here, I have the different settings up here, different brushes and different shapes you could choose. So just to start off with here, I'm going to choose what's called a stroke. So left click on that and select, and then that's my brush there, that little green circle. And just to show you that it, how the paint node basically works is I just left click and hold and drag now and then we'll draw a paint stroke. Now anytime I release the mouse button and start again, it's gonna create a new stroke. And I'll show you where that could be seen in a second. But as you see right here, I can see it in the paint, in the viewer one here. I can also see my media out, viewer two. And if I go back to edit, I'll see it in my edit page as well. So go back to Fusion. Now once you create a stroke, you'll notice that over here, you'll have the modifiers now lit up instead of grayed out under the inspector for the paint. Make sure that's selected. So if I wanted to actually see the stroke and make some adjustments to it, I come over to modifiers and left click on that. And you'll see stroke two and stroke one. But since I've only made stroke one, it'll automatically, once you let go, start up a stroke two. So if you try to adjust anything here, like right afterwards, it might look like nothing's changing but that's cause again, it automatically creates stroke two, but I actually haven't drawn anything yet. So it won't actually be uh, on the footage. And if I click up here in stroke one, that stroke two will disappear because this is the actual only stroke that I've done any work with. So you can see on our, on our modifiers here, we have brush controls, apply controls, which includes the different apply modes uh, where you choose the color. And then down below are the stroke controls, which uh, basically, or you could change the settings for, say, the right on, which is basically the stroke being formed, how you drew it. So you started at one point, went around, and finished. So if I come down here under my first stroke, come down to stroke controls, right on, I can grab, grab with the left click on this 
endpoint here and drag that to the left. And if you look at the first viewer there, you can see that the stroke is now being basically undrawn. So that's how you can animate the drawing of the strokes is through the right on. You can also start it from the beginning here, from the left, from the start, and drag that over. Or any combination, you can kind of grab it in the middle and move it around. You can also change the size of the angle, which would be the stroke as a whole. So if I change the size here, the entire thing will grow bigger or smaller. The angle will make it rotate around the center point. You can also change the spacing here. And the bigger the spacing becomes a bunch of series of little dots versus more of a smooth line. And up top here, you have your brush controls, so your brush shape. Now everything you can change these things before you start drawing the stroke. So if I wanted to draw another stroke, I could make all the changes first and have it appear. But you could also edit it after the fact, which is what I'm doing here with my one stroke. So we can change the size up here under brush controls, which basically varies the thickness of the stroke. So I come over here and you can see the stroke is getting bigger, getting wider. And you can also change the softness of it. So if I bring it over to the left, it'll have a very harsh edge there. You can see it a little better if I grow it bigger here and change the size. That's a very distinct shape. But if I increase the softness, it kind of softens it around the edge, makes it more kind of like an airbrush. Now, if you want, just want to, if you don't want to worry about softness, instead of the soft brush here, you could just choose a circular, and then that gets rid of the softness altogether. Now, different apply modes. Basically, the probably the two main ones that are used are the color, and then the clone, which I showed in the intro. That you, that you could also use this for object removal, which I'll show in the next part. But probably the most used would be the color. Now under here, you could change the color. So if I want to change it, say I didn't like white, I want to change it to red, I change it to red, or any of these other colors, I could change it to green. With the individual sliders, you could change its opacity. So if you want to animate it fading in, you can animate it that way. You could also animate it, animate it with the right on, like I showed before, or a combination of that. So now if I want to create a new stroke, I can come back into the paint to the first viewer here and make sure that the paint node is still selected. And then up here are the different options for the, uh, basically the paintbrush. So you could do multi-stroke. That's usually used more for if you're going to be doing some kind of rotoscoping. Uh, basically anything you draw when you're in multi-stroke will only be on one frame. While anything you do with a stroke is available throughout the entire length of the footage. So if you're going to go, scrub through here you can see that the stroke stays with the footage and that is animatable but if i come over here i'm going to draw just a regular multi-stroke which is the default when you first create a paint tool that'll what it it will default to the multi-stroke most times you're going to want to use a stroke i'll show you what the multi-stroke does here so i could choose now i've chose a different paint here so under modifiers i have my original one still here which is stroke one but now I'm going to have the multi-stroke. Now I can change any of these settings I want so I can make it grow really big. And have it not be much softness. I can change the color. Say to a blue. So now I could draw a blue line here. But if I move just one frame forward, the multi-stroke is gone. While my re regular stroke is still there. So basically that allows you to, to paint something different on uh, each different frame. Again, that's usually uh, most used for something like um, rotoscoping or some kind of say, animation where you want to change frame by frame what you're drawing, kind of make it have it look like a hand-drawn animation. But again, stroke is one you usually want to use. So if I click on stroke again, if you look over in the modifiers, I now have a stroke too. I still have the and multi-stroke and my original stroke, puts them in order. But now anything I want to change, I will change under stroke too. So again, I could change the size, the softness, I can make it very soft, change the color again to like yellowish green, change the opacity a little bit, and then draw here. Now the next one you see here is the polyline stroke, and that actually lets you draw basically line segments connected by points. 
So if I choose pylon stroke, and again, I can change the color. So let's look over here under the modifiers. I'm on the polyline stroke. So I could decrease the size, make a very hard edge there, uh, change the color to more of a purple here. And then basically, I want to left click and release. So I'm just going to be clicking points. So that creates a point. And then the next point I click on, it'll connect those two points. And I go around here. So this way I could draw squares, rectangles. Uh, triangles and if I want to finish off the shape I just go to my original point you'll see it turn to a little circle here and that will finish that one off and complete the shape and if I later want to go on and change the shape uh, say if I want to just change where this point is I could select it left click on it and then I can alter the shape say here make it more of a triangle instead of a rectangle now, once you're in the polyline stroke, you'll notice up here you have a whole lot more options. So some of the options you have is uh, click a pen. So if you choose click a pen, that'll allow you to add other points along your line segments. So if I click here and choose that, and I click any point in the middle here, I add another point, and I can modify that. Now I'll change the shape. I have the ability to draw a pen, which instead of doing individual points, I'll actually be draw like a stroke like I did with the paint stroke, but it'll be made up of multiple different points. I have the insert and modify, which again is kind of the same thing here. Click on that. I can insert a point and move that around. I can modify other points. That's usually kind of what you want to use after you first draw your shape if you want to kind of refine it. Modify only. Now that's very handy if you want to, if you don't want to accidentally create a new point, but you do want to change the existing points. By choosing this, I can grab and move another point. But if I click anywhere on the line, it won't create a new point. And if I lose my selection here, I can just left click, hold and drag a box, do a box selection, and then I'll select that point, and then I can move it around again. Here, basically with the done button here, if you were to draw a line segment and didn't want to finish it off and create a enclosed shape, and I can demonstrate that here. So here I'll just click two points. Now if I don't want to finish the shape off, if I come up here and click on done, then it'll finish that. So then if I click any place else, it won't try to finish the shape. And I'll just have these two points here, which I can highlight and move around here. You also have the close the polyline here, so that way If I was to have, say, like three points, and I want to finish it without actually drawing it on, then I can just hit to close the polyline, and then I'll connect the last two, first point and the last point, and create a line segment there. Next one here is basically there's two different ones that go together, either smooth or linear. That way, if you make one of these shapes, uh, anything with the polyline, if you want it to be more of a, a curved edge rather than a straight edge, you can use these two different functions here. So if I come over here, select on this point right here, and have it selected, if I choose curve here, that'll smooth it out, or I could go back to linear, and I'll make it a sharp edge, sharp crease there. So you could do that with any point and change it from a smooth curve to more of a straight point here. You also have select all points. If you want to select all points of a shape here, you click on that, that'll select all the points. And then say if you want to move the shape around, then you can click on one of them and it'll move the entire shape, all the points at one time. That way you can kind of position it. You also have show key points, which shows all the different points on your shape. If you just want to see them if they're not selected and you want to see all your different points, you can also do the show all handles. Because basically with any one of these points on the polyline, again, you can move you move an individual point if you want, but you also have a couple of handles, pylon handles here, and also considered Bezier handles, which allows you to change the curve. So here I could drive this left handle here and change the bottom part here, or I could grab this other handle and change the top part here. They also kind of go together, but that kind of allows you to refine the curve coming in and out of a point. 
you can you do create a shape box. So if you want to move and change the shape of uh, multiple points at one time, here I can select select the points here, move this in a little bit, make sure these points are selected. And if I do a shape box, it creates a little dotted box around here, and that way I can change the whole shape. So I can move it, change what take one of these points, stretch it out, either top to bottom or left to right switch it around so that's all with the shape box you could delete individual points so if you're if you have too many points on your shape so see if i want to get rid of this point right here are you make sure it's selected and then come up here to delete points hit delete and that delete that one point you use reduce points which basically uh, if you have too many points or a whole lot of points defining a shape and you don't really need them all, you select those points, hit reduce points, and that'll allow you to uh, reduce it. Say if you have like 50 different points, you really don't need that much definition. You could reduce it down to maybe half the points. Just makes it a little easier to deal with. Now we have some more advanced features here, which I'll go over in a later video. But that's kind of the main tools of the paint node when you're using a polyline stroke. Now I can delete this paint node and create a new paint node. So I'll do that. So I delete that one, create a new paint node. So this is starting over from scratch. I'm gonna again put that into the first viewer here and show that I could do, we also are able to do shapes. So I could do a circle. So if I click circle, basically where I left click and I'm gonna drag and hold and that'll create the circle. So I'll demonstrate that now. And that creates it and you can change its size. And once it's created, again, you want to come over into the inspector, come over to the modifiers, and again, by default, it'll create a circle two, but it doesn't actually paint it. So if you click on circle one, that second one will, that's automatically created will disappear. So now you have control over the circle you made. And again, you could change the color. Uh, you could change its radius. You could change that from within the inspector here. You could also come over into the window, and if you click, if click and hold, on one of the corners, like not like at 90 degrees, but in between, you could change the size. You could change the size. You could also click here in the middle and that'll allow you to change the position or use the arrows to lock yourself in the X direction or the Y direction. You can see that reflected here under center X, center Y. You can also left click either one of these number fields here and change those values here and move it around. Now you also have rectangles. So if I click on that, I could draw a rectangle. Again, you see here, it automatically created a rectangle too, but I don't need that because I just created a rectangle one. So I'll click on that. And again, I could change the color if I want. Now the rectangle, you have both the center, but then you have the height and width as well. And again, any of these parameters are animatable by clicking on the keyframe button at the end here and you can keyframe any of these parameters. Now here, look here, you also have copy polyline, copy ellipse, and copy rectangle. What that basically lets you do is kind of like a patch replace. So if I say, if I go copy ellipse here and I draw an ellipse, it's basically, look here, you have a source and then you have where the ellipse is. So if you move the source around, if you look, if you look within the ellipse here, you move the source, you see you're cloning from a different spot. So I come over here, move this over, change the shape. And again, it's kind of like a patch replace and you can do the same thing with copy rectangle and it allows you to say if you have a, a spot over here you want to quickly get rid of then you could just kind of move this over change its shape change its height down here and then copy from a different spot and just kind of go over top of it to replace an object in the background without having to use the clone paint so one thing i haven't touched on yet is how do you delete your different strokes so if you have a uh, multiple strokes and you want to delete one or more of them, I'll show you now how to do that. So I'll start off by creating a few strokes here. So I'm just going to come up here and choose a stroke brush. 
And I'll draw a few strokes here, do a circle there, circle over here, and a third one. Now if I want to delete any three of these, I do the same thing, make sure that my paint node is selected. Come over to modifiers. This will list all my different strokes. And like I showed before, it'll have that one extra stroke that you haven't started yet. So I click on any of these previous ones, that one will automatically disappear. But now I have three different strokes. So it's really easy to delete any one of them. Say so if I want to delete the third stroke here, this last stroke I didn't like, just click on it. That selects it. Hit the delete key, and I'll delete that stroke. So if you're going along, if you're trying to trace something and it doesn't come out quite right, then just come over to your inspector, to your modifiers, choose the stroke you want to delete, and delete it. Now if you just want to temporarily disable it, if you just click on the button here, that'll click temporarily disable it. But to delete it, just click on it, hit the delete key, and that deletes that stroke. Okay, one of the other ways you can use the paint node is combined with a background node. Start with the background node. Now you can't use the paint node pretty much just by itself. It has to be have some kind of input. So before I was using the media in as an input, but you could also use a background. So I drag this down, connect the background into the paint, and I can put that into the first viewer here. So now I have the background with the paint. So I can choose a stroke and I can draw on it just like I did when I was using the media as an input. So I can do all basically all the same functions. I can also change the color of the background or change the color of the stroke. So right now, I go to the modifiers. I have my stroke I just created. So again, I could change the color of that. I could also go into the background and change the color of that into anything I want here. And including, which is also very useful, if you then want to combine this things you're painting, the shapes you're painting, and combine that again with your media, if you try right now, if I just drag this down, the output into the output of the media in, I'll create a merge. But now, if you look at the output, you're just seeing the, the paint in the background. But if you want to see the stroke without the background, you can make sure the background is selected. Make sure your color is on black, and take your alpha down to zero. And that makes the background transparent, but then you'll be able to see anything you paint. So if I go back to the paint node here and do a polyline stroke, You'll see that and it also shows up on my final media out here again because I had it merged. You can also use a fill so if I wanted to make this a solid circle I can come back to the paint and this button right here is the fill and I just have to click inside and that'll fill it in. Now to get rid of this little line you see around there just come up to the stroke that you made your shape with and take the softness and bring that down and that'll fill in that point so then you just have a solid shape. So if I have this pie line stroke here, I can also have paint fill here chosen and click on that and that'll fill it in. And then again, I can come back up to the pie line stroke here, go up to brush controls and change the softness and that'll help fill that in so that it is a solid shape. So that's the basics of the color node, color apply mode. So next I'll be showing you how to use the clone effect and that's the second probably most used function within the paint node so I will show you that next. So use a clone brush within the paint node. I'm going to start over here with the same kind of beginning before. Have my media in. Then I'm going to add my paint node. I'm going to put that in the first viewer by hitting one. Then I'm going to come over to modifiers and before that I'm going to make sure I have strokes selected here. Then I'll come over to modifiers and you'll see my first stroke here and just expand the different controls just so I can see everything. Now before we're using the color apply mode, that's basically anytime you're going to be drawing any kind of shapes or any kind of uh, doing any kind of painting, that's what we're going to use. But now we're going to be doing something uh, with the clone, we'll be trying to remove an object, say. So then you choose the second one here, clone, and that's going to change your different options here. So you have things like what colors you're going to clone, uh, or what channels you're going to clone from, uh, red, green, blue, and alpha. I uh, can change the opacity of the clone portion you're going to be using, so you could fade it into the background a little easier. You have these different check marks for overlay, still source, or snap offset, time offset, which allows you to, instead of like normally, if you don't change anything, you're going to be cloning from the same frame of your footage. 
So if I want to remove this tree, I could take a clone source down here, and when I start painting, it'll be painting this, these pixels onto this area, which I'll show in a second. But if you change the time offset, you can actually pick a different frame in your footage and be cloning from there. So if an object comes into your footage just for a few seconds and then is gone, and your background stays basically still and isn't really changing much, then you could take a point in the footage where the object isn't there, clone from there, and paint the object out. It makes it very uh, easy to do it. If it's, again, your, if your background isn't moving much, and you're able to get a part of your footage where that object doesn't appear. But by default here, I'll just show the basics of it. So you can see here with my paintbrush, it's basically the green circle, but it has an X through it. And I can change the size of the paintbrush here so it's easier to see. You see I have a circle with a green uh, cross through it. Now to choose the clone source, the part of the frame that I want to be cloning from, you hold down the Alt key and then left click, and you'll see it turn red. And there's a, now that X is left behind, so that's where I'm going to be cloning from. So say if I want to paint out this tree, I could paint it out with this ground here, so it kind of moves, kind of matches up with the background. So all I have to do is now start left click, hold, and start painting. And you can see here that I'm now painting from that spot where the X is up here to where I'm painting. Now any place I move, that relationship will stay the same. You can see that the X is moving along. If I want to create, uh, choose a new spot I want to clone from, say if I want to clone this tree and want to clone another one right next to it, I just come to the base of it, hold down the Alt key and left click. And now my source has changed to the base of that tree. So I can come over here or say if I want to come over here, I can just click and hold the paint and I can paint a new tree in here. So that's another function that you can also add things. Now this is just, this isn't really clear right now. Uh, it's just because uh, as a, using it as an example, to show you how to use it. And again, I can choose another point again, just by holding Alt, left clicking, and I can erase a different part here, clone a different part. So that's kind of like the basics what you've, you use with the clone brush. Now you can see over here I have a series of strokes here. So I can come back and modify them afterwards. So I got rid of my four strokes, so I have three strokes now. So I can click on stroke one here. And again, I could change the size of that stroke so it will be larger. I could change the softness. I could change the opacity. So if you look over here, this is where that stroke is. If I take the passage down, then you'll be able to see the tree. And I bring it back up again, and then the clone works. Okay, now with the cloning I'm doing so far, I've been doing just within the same frame, but you could also do uh, use a time offset. So if you wanted to take footage from uh, later on in the video and paint it on and clone onto this frame, you can use the time offset. So basically to do that, you first have to make sure that something that your source is under the source tool. Now you can use other footage. So if you have something else in your media pool, you could clone from that. But for this example, I'm just gonna be cloning from a different part of the same footage. Again, if you have an object that comes in for only one or two seconds, and you wanna paint it out, you can use a source from a different part of the video clip to paint over that object. Uh, I'll show you, kind of demonstrate that here. So I'm gonna drag in as my source. Here, I'm gonna make sure I'm on paint node is selected. And my modifiers, I'm for my stroke, make sure it's in the clone mode right here. So I'm gonna left click and hold my media in and drag that over till I get to the source tool and let go. Now that adds that here. And then again, if you had some other footage you wanna use, you drag that over. Right now, I'm just using my media in. And I keep on clicking over there. So, so I'm gonna change the time offset. Now, if I come forward in the footage here to around frame 350, you can see that there's this path here instead of just the sand. That's, you can see earlier, here when I pan over, it's just from away from that sand over to this little path. So if I come to the beginning of my footage here, if I change my offset here, time offset, to frame 350. Now when I change, take my clone source, it's going to be from frame 350, not this first frame here. And I'll make the brush larger here so you can see that. 
So I'm going to come right from the bottom here. I'm going to hold the Alt key. That's the same. And left click. That shows my source, but my source isn't from this frame. It's going to be frame 350. Then you'll notice that one. So I start painting here. Left click paint. It's now pulling from frame 350 instead of this frame. So if you look over into my media out there, you see it's painting on that path other than the sand. So that's from paint, that's from frame 350. And I could paint all over this. But again, that's to, to remove an object. You can see now that my clone source is coming from a, later on, a frame later on. But I'm applying it to this frame here. So you do that again from putting your footage into the source tool and changing your time offset. And I can change this to whatever one I want. And then start cloning again. I can paint that out. You could also use a still source. Kind of the same thing. Except now when I'm moving it, if I move through, you'll see that it moves through. And it changes the background. And what I cloned over in the original frame. But you could just choose a still frame from there. So I could change that up. So if I just want to do uh, some of this leak footage here, I could drag that on and just show it in the first frame here. That's this footage of a lake. So I go back to this. I could change, choose this as my footage instead of my original media in here. So I'm going to create a new stroke here. Turn my modifiers. Now my stroke 2 is still clone mode. But I want to change the source tool from media in 1 to this media in 2, which is at lake. So I'll just make sure I'm in my paint node here. Make sure the modifiers are selected. And I'm going to drag this over into the media in. So now it's media in 2 as my source. So I'll come make sure I'm in paint modifiers. Now I'm going to change it to still source. And I can just change it to whatever frame I want. Choose frame 10. Now it's going to take frame 10 from my media in to here. I could go to frame 10 here. So that's, that's going to be a still that I'm using. So that if I start painting over, put this in the first thing here, start choose my point. So I'm going to change down here. Hold on the Alt key and click. That's my new point. But now when I'm painting, I'm going to be painting from media in two. And I can make my brush quite a bit bigger here. Under modifiers. Change my brush pretty large. And when I paint, you can see now I'm painting on from that frame, that still frame. And I can paint the lake in here. Combine the two. But now as I scrub through, You'll see the background change, but the lake part won't change because I just chose a still frame. So again, the original footage will go through and play through, but the source where I cloned from, the median two, it'll just keep that one frame that I chose, which is frame 10. And I'll just keep that as a still frame. And again, I can paint it through whatever. But that's the basics of how to use the clone brush. There's a lot more to the paint node, but this is kind of just the basics to get you uh, using it and kind of getting a feel for it. So I hope you liked this video on the Resolve 16 paint node, on the basics of it, and I thank you for watching.